In this video, we're gonna show you taking this car from a European Econobox to a five cylinder engine swap with a turbo. This car belongs to James from Donut Media. Now, why would he wanna swap a five cylinder into his car? One, because it's different. You don't see a lot of those. Two, it shares a lot with Audi RS3 and TT RS. And there's a lot of people doing some pretty crazy stuff with those. There's some fast RS3s out there. I've always been a fan of five cylinder Audis, Ur Quattro, and all those awesome Group B cars from the 80s. So I thought it would be neat to have a little bit of that DNA um, in my car. Plus Mike from Eurowise hit me up and he was like, hey, I want to develop a swap kit for the Mark III. Uh, do you want to use your car? And I was like, yeah, I've been a fan of Mike for a long time. And to have him work on one of my cars uh, was kind of a dream come true, so. This is a European imported Mark III Golf that's getting an engine swap. It has a 1.8 liter eight valve and is mated with a five speed manual transmission. The Mark III came in a variety of models, including the 172 horsepower VR6 and the Harlequin. This 1.8 liter eight valve, however, came with a whopping 90 horsepower. And because it's a CL, this sweet ass clock instead of a tachometer. Are you telling me that it's 825? Now you may be wondering how James acquired this European import from this guy. Jamie Orr is an automotive world traveler, renowned VW enthusiast, and importer of interesting VW things. He acquired this car, and well, let me let him tell the story. I am going to the airport in about seven hours and flying to Germany. The Volkswagen Group's bringing me over for their coming home event. I don't have a car to drive over there. I had the idea of like, why don't I just go on Craigslist? eBay or something and just buy a car when I get there. And I mentioned it to KW Suspension. KW, like, yeah, 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 no problem. We sent a set of coilovers to your hotel. Now I have coilovers at a hotel in Germany waiting for me when I don't own a car or wheels or anything else. I'm in a car in a little village about 20 miles northwest of Wolfsburg. This car has 110,000 miles. It's lived in the village its entire lifetime. So now I just have to make sure that it runs and drives okay, and then do the deal, basically. We've got the KW suspension. We have a lot more parts. We have the interior to do. We have the wheels to do, everything else. We are here in the basement, in the parking lot of the hotel. We have the guys from Denmark working on lowering the front springs. We have the guys from MIVW in Holland doing the left side. The ringers, the guys from Belgium and uh, from Luxembourg doing this side. After the event in Europe, Jamie shipped the car back to the US, at which point he drove it across the country to the SEMA show in Las Vegas. I decided that I wanted to buy another Mark III Golf. Um, that was my high school car. And now that I'm a grown up, I have a job. And with the job uh, comes paychecks that I can, you know, it was finally time for me to build the car that I always wanted. And I started talking to Jamie right before SEMA and he was like, you should just buy my car. And I was like, I don't think I can afford your car. And he was like, you might be surprised. So we struck up a deal, met him in person in Las Vegas for the first time and bought the car from him. We're at Eurowise, a European automotive shop known for swapping things into older water-cooled Volkswagens. The plan is to take this 90 horsepower engine out and swap to a 2.5 liter while fabricating the parts to make it possible for you to do that at home for yourself. We're providing the parts to make this used engine like new. First, let's see what's left of the 90 horsepower from the factory this vehicle had and get this thing on a dyno. Today we're at Shift Fast Motorsports. Uh, our goal is to dyno this car, just to get some baseline numbers. We're gonna get some numbers for before, and then after we do our motor swap, we're gonna do numbers after. I didn't know anything about how much power this car makes before I Googled it like 10 minutes ago, because this motor actually didn't come in these cars in the US. I mean, <laughs> this car doesn't even have a RPM gauge. It's, uh, it's a clock. There you go, boom. Pretty excited to see about what kind of power it puts on. Uh, nothing. I don't think we're gonna need to strap it down. <laughs> 70? Okay, I'm so we got something. 65, 70, and 95. And I already lost. So um, you're, you're betting that this... Yeah. <laughs> He's betting it's blowing up on the dyno. <laughs> so 
So Mike said 90 and... Yeah, I originally said 90 not knowing anything about this meter. And I was absolutely wrong. It made 57 at the wheels. James uh, said 45, right? No, James said 60, so 60. he's actually really close. <laughs> Our dyno results were a staggering 57 horsepower and 89 pound foot of torque. Now the guys Euro Wise are gonna get this thing out and swap into 2.5 using their custom fabricated parts on this car. Because we specialize in VW and Audi parts, Mike hit us up to see if we could help get the parts he needed to refresh James's car. We provided parts like ignition coils, spark plugs, timing components to keep the engine running right, a water pump, a coolant flange, and all the gaskets required for this job. If you need parts for your VW or Audi, make sure you check us out at shopdap.com. Next, the guys at Eurowise had to tear down the engine to make sure everything in the 2.5 cylinder engine was in good working condition. On older water-cooled models, you have a mounting system for the engine that is shaped like a triangle. You have a rear engine mount, a rear transmission mount, and then a front mount for both. So the trick is to convert an engine that is intended to hang from the frame rails and make it mount on this triangle system. These brackets allow you to use the original rear mounts of the Mark III. And using Eurowise's custom front cross member, you now have the ability to have a front mount on your engine. Now this engine is in the engine bay and mocked up and there's a couple differences with this setup using the Mark II mounts that are mocked up here. The biggest issue you'll see is this frame rail is a little snug on this engine here, so they will need to move the engine towards the driver's side. As you can see here, he's working on getting some of the CAD stuff done so that they can make the mounts for this car. Now that our drivetrain has ample support, we need to work on our shafts, our axle shafts. The drive shafts that would have come with a donor car wouldn't bolt up to the vehicle because it uses different outer axles on newer cars. They are going to be using custom axles which have the same outer and inner as this but have a correct length for this custom application. Now the drivetrain is connected we're going to get rid of this linkage style shifter assembly for a cable style that's found in newer cars. As you can see with the linkage style this shifter has rods that it uses with a bunch of bushings attached to it. These bushings do have a lot of wear issues over time and usually are destroyed on older vehicles. On the cable style, the only major bushing here is in the base here, and then it uses a cable on either side for a left and right movement. So this one you'd see was just left to right, and then this one's gonna be fore and aft. I'm not insane making anything at all. Another thing to modernize this car, it's required is going to be putting a drive-by-wire gas pedal in here. So this is going to be a similar style manual linkage setup that would be on the car. And then they have a custom fabricated bracket that they use to make a drive-by-wire setup retrofit on. Now the control engine management for this car, they have a custom wiring harness that they've modified using the original harness from the 2.5 to retrofit it into the vehicle. After that, you need tuning software to make the immobilizer defeated so that this ECU will allow the car to start and improve performance. Now that we got the engine all mocked up, all the mounts built and everything, we're moving on to more important things like stopping the car with all this added extra horsepower. This is the factory front brake rotor. Overall diameter is nine and a half inches compared to the new brake system that we're gonna be installing is gonna be 11 inch. That uses a Willwood four piston caliper. Uh, it's nice and lightweight, paired with a vented 11 inch rotor. Uh, compared to the factory rotor is non-vented, so you're gonna get some additional cooling, gonna get additional clamping force, and you know, obviously better braking. We obtained new hubs for him, or spindles rather. Went ahead and got them powder coated, uh, installed new wheel bearings, so everything basically is brand new. We'll be on the front end. All right, so we're slowly piecing this Mark III back together, and basically we're just gonna hook up the battery charger to the battery and try to fire this thing up for the first time today. Uh, 
Uh, it doesn't have an exhaust hooked up right now. Uh, we will plan on making our own bolt-on downpipe. Some other cool things that we have on this car, on the 2.5, some of these models came with electric steering. In this case, this car did have electric steering. So we use a 1.8 liter power steering pump, and then we manufactured a billet bracket and billet alternator that uses the factory belt. So essentially you can just go buy the belt that's supposed to go with this AC compressor that's typically sitting right here. Strap it to your 1.8T power steering pump, and uh, everything's bolt-on, and you can basically have power steering in your Mark III. So they mounted the turbo, they have an external wastegate on it, they have to mount a downpipe and get all the boost piping figured out and add an intercooler. Now because this engine does have the stock bottom end, they're not going to be pushing a huge amount of power right from the go. It's going to have around 10 pounds of boost and they got to do a lot of fine tuning to get there. Now all these things sound easy for me to say, but all those things require removing it, installing it, testing it, all custom fabbed items on this car. So this is taking place over quite a period of time. They also have rotiforms, which are custom matched to the paint scheme of the car. In addition to that, they're gonna be taking the coilovers off the car and installing air suspension with a custom trunk setup with all hard lines. So we just kinda of got together and teamed up with Garrett, built a turbulent manifold, uh, strapped a G25 660 turbo on there. Scott fabricated a bunch of the, the intercooler tubing, Vibrant donated the intercooler and all the piping and you know, HD clamps and whatnot and uh, we basically just built him a, a full turbo kit. James wanted to keep this car as stealthy looking as possible. That's why we painted the intercooler uh, black. You know, it's California and guys get put over there all the time for silly carb, yeah, carb details, so. Once they finish all the tuning and stuff like that, the transmission is gonna come back out of the car because they're gonna put a limited slip differential in it because this thing is going to be uh, with an open differential, it's just gonna be a one tire fire and it's probably not gonna go anywhere very quickly off the line, just better handling overall. These are like OG mods that people did back in the day in Mark III's. And then also you can see here, these stubby mirrors were also another thing that were super popular because they're just a little guy that, yeah, look at that little mirror. So the idea was always to find, you know, super rare period correct parts for the car. I lucked out with finding some cool parts. There wasn't like a super specific plan that I set out to begin with. I just wanted period correct 90s and just kind of collected pieces as they popped up on Instagram. The wheels were kind of like the last decision, the wheels and the bumpers. The car came with fully textured bumpers. So originally the idea was to run color matched wheels with the textured bumpers, but last minute we decided to just paint everything uh, the same color. And I think I'm gonna lean into that even more and color match a little bit more of the stuff. This swap is something that isn't normally done yet. This has become a kind of a, a more common swap or, or I suspect will be more common over time because 2.5s are becoming more affordable and because of the RS3 TTRSs of the current 2.5s are making a boatload of horsepower. So, yeah, go ahead. We're here at Euro Empire in Charlotte, North Carolina. Gonna get some baseline numbers. Uh, we got the turbo kit wrapped up, got the car washed and drove it over here. Hoping to see what kind of numbers it puts down, do some tweaking on the tune if need be, and go from there. It's a bone stock motor, uh, stock internals, everything like that. Uh, it's got a five pound spring, but it hits about 10 pounds uh, peak. We don't want to push over 10 pounds of boost on the stock motor, so we'll see what it makes. We can have all the air. What is this? Cold air intake. Why, why is there ice on the intake, Mike? He just drove 20 miles to get here, so try to cool it down a little bit.
the dip in the graph is because he uh, led off and got back into the throttle. 304. 304. And 269. Not bad for Saki CU. Base map. 10 pounds of boost. We we're able to get a manual electronic boost controller. We're gonna throw it on there and throw, throw it up a couple PSI. Okay. Again, you know we can't just leave anything alone, so. So successful day, made 327 and 301 torque at the wheels. A little, a little over 250 horsepower over stock motor, so I'd say success. Uh, it's gonna drive a lot different than stock. Uh, I think James would be really happy with the power results. <laughs> oh, torch steer. Uh, plans for the car are coming up. I'm just gonna try and enjoy it as much as possible, drive it as much as I can, um, keep collecting weird little things from Europe that are very just expensive pieces of fiberglass. I wanna do some body work maybe this winter, clean up the rocker panels, find uh, some matching side skirts, the Pontus kit, I wanna complete that. Do some shaving and smoothing stuff out so uh, in general, more green and more smooth, but mainly just enjoy the car and uh, drive it as much as possible.